diagram. This diagram is I have taken from some textbook. Uh, this is uh, needless to say it is all the context free grammar. These are all context free grammars. Yeah. And this portion, this right hand portion is the ambiguous grammar. Ambiguous grammar you know very well. Whatever you try, however we try, uh, you cannot have a, uh, you cannot, uh, you know the language can have many grammar. So, if one of them we can find out the uh, found out the ambiguous grammar, then great, unambiguous grammar, that is great. But some of the languages, and it is uh, undecidable problem. That is, means its complexity is huge. So, so unambiguous ambiguous grammar is absolutely no no for computer right now, till now. Nowadays, when the CPU power is increasing and uh, natural language processing. We may have to handle the ambiguous grammar, but we know very well that in our uh, literature, in our everyday world, we, we generate the humor and satire everything by this ambiguous term, like just maybe double meaning words and all this. Uh, uh, because when the computer is coming into this natural language processing, then uh, these areas should be looked into, and uh, there will be some other algorithm should be there. One of them definitely dynamic programming that you were introduced already already uh, earlier but right now for the our syllabus our syllabus we are we are dedicated to this portion of the grammar this is context free grammar and fortunately all are deterministic context free grammar that is uh, you know deterministic context free grammar can be uh, can be resolved with deterministic pda machine as rules are somewhat different than overall context free grammar so, deterministic context free grammar and the simplest of simple is the LL0. Uh, it hardly does any sub purpose, it is a, is a top down and what does the 0 means? You are, you are just not looking anything in the input uh, string uh, and you try, you, you do whatever. So, this is a meaningless uh, LL0, but LR0 is not, not meaningless and you always see that LR0 or LR anything is a superset of LL. Then comes uh, LL0, then we, we have already introduced LL1. This one is very interesting grammar. Remember the, uh, the area under this curve is not strictly proportional, but one thing you, you must know, there are, there are some grammars, unambiguous grammars are there, we are finding uh, a suitable unambiguous grammar, but finding a rule may be difficult. So um, that is generally we we don't try to in our programming languages. So we are right now in LL1 grammar. LL1 grammar is very interesting grammar. It is uh, actually we human thinks that is the first interesting grammar. You know LL1 grammar. Uh, it is basically a top-down parsing, but very, with a deterministic top-down parsing. That means we always take a step that we cannot go back. If we can go back and again come back or go back, try, that is called brute force backtracking. That is absolutely no no in compiler because whenever there may be uh, there may be 50 rules in derivation, then maybe after uh, 30 second rule you decided you have to go back to rule number, step number 3 and change the rule. So the, there's a hodgepodge and then we much memory needed in compiler, compiler may hang uh, and uh, if a 10 lines of program sometimes take say 10 seconds, sometimes say 10 minutes. So this is absolutely no no. So that is called brute force top down parsing technique. Uh, but by brute force top down parsing techniques any unambiguous grammar can be parsed. That is a guarantee. You did not brute force and but that time not be definitely ON, it definitely between ON and ON cube and the space complexity your computer memory too much taken. So we have to modify the that grammar. Uh, how the modification? The modification will be any left recursion should be removed. Uh, then then it is not guaranteed that any direct or indirect left recursion it would, it has to be removed. Then then even it is not guaranteed that it be LL1 grammar, then we calculate the right hand side of all rules.
rooms we take the right hand side of all rooms of a single left hand side one variable or non terminal right hand side uh, maybe rule number 1 rule number 2 rule number 3 then we take the first of rule number 1 first of rule number 2 run first of rule number 3 so these all first set should intersection should be shy so that means by looking a particular terminal we know which rule to be applied that is great and we also have to take that whether that variable or non terminal is nullable or not if it is nullable then uh, we have to take first of that variable and follow up that variable or uh, shy so this is a necessary and sufficient condition for ll1 parsing but the uh, thing is that actually a little parsing you have to generate a little parsing table there i always recommend so every non terminal you first check it whether nullable or nullable a separate column and if it is nullable you check it that first and follow up that variable is shy and then you make all uh, up, upside and all the terminals no dollar should be there and uh, you know the how to calculate first calculation first calculation if it's epsilon epsilon can be there but no dollar should be there dollar is the input maka and is if you take the is is the starting symbol and the, then the dollar should be always the follow of s is be there if s comes on the right hand side uh, before any variable or terminal then follow of that also come into the follow of that s uh, so now you fill up the parsing table you already aware of the parsing table the parsing table should contain one and only one entry one parsing table can be blank that okay but sometimes whenever you are reducing if you see a top of the stack is your non terminal and the input is a terminal and there is no such rule from the your parsing table then definitely uh, that is as a wrong you have to pop pop that particular variable and you have to until and unless pop you have to see uh, you have to see whether any variable from the follow of that a variable if, if you think a is the uh, top of the stack till that you have to pop this is called error recovery because in in compiler error recovery is very important part that is panic errors different error. and there you require the follow set calculation in top down parsing and even also bottom up parsing sometimes uh, whenever there are an error uh, you have to pop of the already uh, whatever in the variable then you then you have to stop popping till you see some uh, terminal in the follow set so that is that is the reason we always calculate fast and follow for both for for bottom of fast top down parsing and the bottom up parsing because for the error recovery and um, we also see that in uh, ll1 parsing and you might ask why not ll2 no necessary because uh, ll1 uh, hardly this is ll key so there is hardly any much difference so one is good enough but difference between 0 and 1 is very good so so ll ll0 is no practical use at all ll1 is many practical use even uh, if some python uh, interpreter done by ll1 ll1 is still being used and uh, there is no use for go for llk though it uh, more languages can be accommodated but definitely we can all these languages can be accommodated by lr1 so lr1 is what we are parsing one look ahead it is much more here the basic difference between ll1 and lr1 one great thing about lr1 that is what what we are parsing you do not need that uh, left recursion removal so that is great so whenever you remove the left recursion removal your grammar looks more natural so your grammar looks more natural for any programming languages because ultimately programmers using those language syntax if the language syntax is looks very much artificial very much concocted it is very difficult to program and think in the that kind of uh, instructions so 
that is the reason the LR1 is much more popular because you don't have to left factor and all these rules fast second whatever in top dot parsing it is not required it is it is a uh, it takes a very good amount of grammar mostly all programming language can be done by LR1 maybe one or two instruction may be there for the even the context sensitive grammar we know the context sensitive grammar the parsing is np complete time in a good amount of time, maybe one or two instructions can be accommodated in a program. But I always say in programming language, 98 to 99 percent of the uh, rules will be the deterministic context with grammar and unambiguous, definitely, uh, and deterministic. Okay. And so, here, now here we see LR1, the difference between LL1 and LR1, LL1, you have to first you put dollar into what is the dollar that is your dot s sorry s you have to put into it s is your starting symbol and lr1 is a reverse ultimately s would come at the end so ll1 whenever you see your parsing stack sh should begin with s and at the end of successful parsing there will be no s it should be dollar and right hand side should be emptied okay. lr1 uh, right hand side should be emptied and the uh, at the end, your starting symbol should be available at your stack. Another interesting point is uh, the handle. What is basically handle? Handle is interesting thing. I'll come to this in uh, bottom of parsing. The in the stack, the everything in the stack, everything happens at the stop. Okay, uh, you, you, from the top, everything happens. If you, if if you see the any right hand, any terminals or combination of right hand terminal, combination of terminals or variable on the top of stack that can be reduced to a variable because you know it is a deterministic context with grammar. Uh, it has can be reduced only one and only variable because there is no other thing. So if you can reduce to a variable and that is a step towards ultimate compaction to S. Because if it is a stack, your last is S, and you have a uh, terminals, and this is called uh, under. Uh, this is called semi-digested portion. Uh, if you think of it like you are uh, having a food, and you have already chewed something, the, the in the in the stack, uh, there are something unchewed but not uh, absorbed, and there the input stack that is not at all given. So, if it is a half, I say half chewed some symbols there and if you found some terminals and variables together, you can get a rule which you whole replace by that single variable and that is the right process to reducing it to S, we call it a handle. You remember the handle is a string of terminals and variables at the top of the stack in bottom of parsing when we want to reduce it by a single variable as per our programming rules then but if, if it is a correct process uh, that it is uh, there may be many rules you can reduce it but not all, are, not all are handle handle we can call it that particular deterministic uh, deterministic step which will ultimately will go to the our S starting symbol. You know, bottom up parsing, ultimately there should be S here, unlike top down parsing. Top down parsing, we first put S and then it will finish. In bottom up parsing, uh, it is a first empty stack, a dollar is there, input string is there. You will put into it shift reduce, whether you shift or reduce. And then in the top of the stack, we have some undi undigested. And it may be bottom, maybe anything. You may have some undigested part that you can quickly reduce to, uh, as per the rule, to a variable, and that and that is the correct step uh, towards making it to S again. Then we call it the handle. So finding a handle is very difficult. It is not so easy. There are various techniques are there. LR1, the tables you have to make a another table like your top down parsing you have a table very simple table if only the 
terminals at the top and the variables at the uh, your variables at the rows and the terminals can be epsilon and they are only very very simple table but here you don't you have to keep a state of the stack and you have to calculate that so that's it this so handle uh, is that's an important word I, I i tried my level best what is the handle is and try to find and try to find the right handle you need the various stuff of drama that is lr1 uh, look ahead lr1 simple lr1 uh, these three are the most uh, important lr0 is useless again but sometimes we use lr0 to understand the uh, lr1 uh, the what is the difference that the table the parsing table is becoming huge maybe maybe uh, a million, million million entries and we are maybe uh, some 10000 entries maybe 1000 entries you remember these parsing table has to be there in main memory uh, so that when we are compiling so that can be restriction and it can be slower so maybe we can to comp lr1 is still the best and lr but here you can always ask a question that uh, there is top down means if you are going for ll1 you are from the left side and bottom up is lr1 you are try to find a rule so that we can go to the top so that is lr1 can we not start from the very middle or uh, anywhere yes you can do this that is called a, another technique that is called cyk technique uh, cyk that is uh, much much better than brute force technique that i have discussed at the very beginning uh, brute force technique you know all the grammars can be all the grammar all the unambiguous unambiguous grammar can be done uh, but top down parsing it make it as o n even lr1 also make it as o n um, brute force never o n it may be o n cube and also it takes lots of space in the memory but there are another clever technique that is called cyk algorithm i i propose if one of your group can uh, elaborate give a presentation i will try also cyk that is not in the syllabus but that is the most comprehensive uh, parsing algorithm and that uses uh, uh, not uh, uh, left side or right side you can do from any middle also so cyk looks after that it is a famous algorithm uh, and it definitely uh, complexity is o n two maximum but space complexity less than brute force it is not at all brute force so in compiler technology a uh, lot of other issues that you can know the how the stack can be used in many way probably in uh, top down parsing you know how the stack is used we generally stack is used only for uh, push and pop and uh, only putting papers at your home uh, to on a stack or in your table plates on your dining table on a stack but stack has many use uh, like a def first search in tree you always go by stack we always visit first child then first child of first child then first child of first child then again go back that is possible only by stack that is another use of stack in tree versa tree tree versa you know graph same thing and in the our fusion automata use the stack for detecting a to the power and b to the power and language that is uh, whenever the e's are coming you push them e onto the stack whenever one b is coming you match one a and take it out uh, so now when the number of a's and number of b's is same uh, then means you are finished and it is accepted uh, that is a deterministic context free grammar that's a to the power and b to the power and grammar another name is called balance parenthesis grammar all can be determined by stack then again uh, in uh, top down parsing we know we are using stack uh, for parsing for deterministic parsing but we have to put some rules for deterministic parsing no left recursion like this 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 uh, removing left recursion that is allowed but grammar not look so natural uh, so the stack is huge use our computer compiler so that's it if you have any question did it with my recorded video or it
this is the follow thing is there synchronizing set is required uh, in in c and java synchronizing symbols is in a semicolon in python this will be white space that is interesting because semicolon put as a in a follow the you in whatever problem you go to the last semicolon and that means the end of the sentence sometime you end semicolon in java or c you see the error comes in your compiler uh, so that is a, a that is a that you call the error recovery. That is an important topic. Uh, every day we try error recovery. Your uh, important topic, your essential thing is definitely your uh, how to get it from out of error. Because uh, if you if you got a single error in your parsing, you should not come out because a uh, parsing uh, can contain say hundreds, uh, two hundred lines of program. So whenever you are parsing, you try to even if one error. You try to go ahead uh, as if you are correcting error, correcting uh, this thing, and go ahead. Any further different error comes in. You generally are good at one error can go to another error. Yes, true. But we try to recover it. You can suggest it if whenever you have used the compiler uh, for advanced compiler like C, C plus plus Java, they will suggest that you probably miss semicolon. You probably use the keyword and all these things. They will also suggest that is uh, very interesting. They are also machine learning part can be incorporated. Our AI is definitely there in compiler, in modern day compiler, because uh, the computer hardware is going a different direction, language goes in different direction. Earlier, every language uh, is hard coded to your CPU. Now, whenever in 8085 or 8086, uh, chip is designed in 1980s, and that time, the, each um, language not necessarily higher level language, a lower level language, assembly language instructions is can be one is to one corresponds to the, the chip uh, your with the hardware. It's so many multiplication means so particular register is there, particular register, particular associated hardware is dedicated. That is called the chip is called CISC complex instruction system code and that is that time uh, compiler writing is easy uh, because you know you have to you know that that particular machine language is there and you just call that machine language but day by day compiler writing is reserved for the expert uh, computer science programmers because you have because here reason is that uh, hardware cannot afford cisc complex instruction system code because uh, it is goes to reduce instruction system code re risc chip all our mobile phone is risc chip it has a four core eight core RISC chip advantage is all instructions of the same length and all instructions of average complexity. You, you don't have a, a, a 8 byte instruction or 100 byte instruction like in CISC because uneven length that is the main problem with the CISC. So you cannot look ahead in CISC, but uh, RISC you can look ahead uh, six instructions. You know the EP instruction is 64 uh, bits or like this. You know it is 32 bits or 64 bits, the uniform length. So, you can look ahead, you can processing. So, it is very, very simple in the hardware point of view. The RISC is much more good and all of the hardwares are now RISC. We have multiple cores in a CPU, but at the time, the your compiler writing is much tougher because the, the your language is also go ahead in like in Python way. There are no semicolon is there, so you cannot synchronize your source language. That uh, if you have a semicolon, you can quickly point out that is the end of instruction. You, in 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 Java Python, you have some uh, you have some bracket opening close bracket second bracket. You know this is the block of the code. Uh, you know this is uh, but in Python everything by indentation white space uh, so it will be difficult and, and language is more English language so the compiler writing is much more interesting and it has and remember you have to all to do it in OAN you cannot afford n square o in to the power 1.5 because then your language will not be touched by the programmers so the hardware goes a different way it is definitely not in a not friendlier way for compiler because in earlier compilers it's much easy uh, whenever the dentistry chip uh, they have developed compiler they they write their whole compiler their operating system 
and uh, in the same code in the C in the PDP-8 computer in uh, 1961, 62. So they are uh, everything is very similar. Now everything is not similar. Right now you don't know where your code will run. It might run at different place, different uh, this thing. So it is now more challenging. So compiler will be always interesting. So you have to, I'll cover this, uh, don't worry, the table driven I've already covered, this thing I covered if you, if you need, I, I will, in my exam, uh, all of the class notes, you, I always available these notes to you, so you be careful about, I'll ask from there, so that, yeah, this is, I just highlight, uh, this thing because I am already preparing my another uh, video on this dedicatedly on this uh, I am not yet ready for this uh, drawing and all this thing but I want to stimulate to your brain so in this case like why ignore and why reduce there is a conflict in uh, whenever you are shift reduce grammar that is an another name of bottom, pars bottom of parsing uh, bottom of parsing the shift reduce grammar is another name. So, there may be two rules come. Uh, reduce by this or re reduce, reduce conflict we call it. And how to avoid the reduce, reduce conflict we need a more bigger table and then reduce, shift, reduce conflict. Whether shift or reduce. If you if you take one step that will you ultimately will not get, you cannot reach S. You can reach top. So, it, it is not a magic. Uh, it is not a magic. Uh, so that is the reason you need a, a more bigger table. LR1 is a more bigger table so that you can definitely reach to the S. So when there is a conflict, like here in the last class we have some conflict here, here no conflict. Whenever there is a conflict, so you need this uh, for your uh, more bigger table. Okay. So